Welcome to the Security on Cloud podcast, brought to you by Anishin, where cloud security and compliance are top of mind. Join the conversation with your hosts, John Vecchi and Scott Emo. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to the Security on Cloud podcast live on Anishin Radio. I'm your host, John Vecchi. And I'm Scott Emo. In this episode, we want to talk about what's going on in security and specifically in cloud security. That's right. And uh, we're going to get fantastic perspective today on cloud security and what's happening there. And with that, I'd like to introduce our very special guest this week. He's presented on the topic of cybersecurity in 29 countries on six continents. He's a lecturer at Charles Sturt University, Australia, and is the author of Secure Cloud Transformation, the CIO's Journey in Surviving Cyber War and Washington Post bestseller, There Will Be Cyber War. He writes for Forbes and the Analyst Syndicate. He's a member of the advisory board at the Information Governance Initiative, and he sits on the Responsible Recycling Technical Advisory Committee, the standard for electronic waste. He's been a chief strategy officer and chief marketing officer and VP of threat research at many Silicon Valley giants, as well as a VP of research at Gartner. His latest book, which is available and you can get it on Amazon right now, which we'll talk about today, by the way, is titled Security Yearbook 2020. It's our pleasure to have you with us today, analyst Richard Steen, and welcome to the show. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. Hi, Scott. Fantastic. Uh, look, it's it's a joy, Richard. I, over the years, it's usually been uh, me and and you know the the, the teams that I've uh, been with with security companies answering your questions. So it's a treat to actually get to ask you some questions uh, on our podcast today. So look, it's uh, we have a lot to talk about today, including your latest security yearbook. I know you're busy writing your next yearbook, and we're going to dive into an article you wrote in Forbes recently over the summer, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the recent events surrounding the solar wind cyber attack. It's pretty much dinner conversation. Every time you turn on the news, you're, you're, you're seeing about it. We're, we're learning more about that every day, but, but I wanted to just start with getting your thoughts. I know you've, you've spoken about this uh, and you've been interviewed many times about it, but I just wanted to get your thoughts. You know, Given everything we know, how should we think about this attack and what should we learn from it? Um, like practically every new attack, you know, with new methodologies, it uncovers weaknesses that we had in our overall security architectures. And in this case, I mean, this is something we've all talked about and we've known that third parties are a great avenue into the enterprise, right, with uh, target being compromised by somebody coming in with the access that they're granted because they're a, an HVAC vendor, um, or maybe uh, Lockheed Martin being attacked through a compromised RSA secure ID token because mm -hmm. RSA had been compromised by, you know, I think China is who we blame for that one. Right. And, you know, so, and a lot of people talk about third-party risk and, but their solution is always, just to automate the process of uh, scanning every one of your suppliers remotely um, and then managing all the questionnaires that you have to go through in a survey to determine if their security maturity is at the level you expect. Um, but then we completely neglect the fact that we all trust software updates and we always have. Um, <clears throat> and yet there's dozens of examples of software updates being compromised, the most famous of which is not Petya in Ukraine. Um, but, you know, the NSA has used them as well in the Flame uh, malware toolkit that, that actually uh, pretended to be a Microsoft update. Um, uh -huh. So now that we've, we've learned this, we've seen the, the vast foothold that we've given to an attacker attributed to uh, the Russia and RSV, they're, so their spy agency, um, you know, just a fantastic intelligence coup for them, right? Because they are embedded now in dozens of organizations, including, you know, U.S. Treasury, Commerce Department, DHS, maybe CISA as part of DHS, um, the nuclear uh, safety organization in the United States that manages our nuclear arsenals. Uh, obviously, a lot of potential for damage there. 
Um, and obviously a lot of potential for really valuable intel that the attackers have been able to gather over a nine-month period of being able to dwell inside an organization. Wow. It's incredible. And, and you know, I recently posted on this that, that we, you know, again, as I said, we're learning more and more every day, but, but it, it seems as though the attackers were able to kind of insert this sunburst malware into the, you know, Orion, that was the update, you know, the SolarWinds Orion update by compromising this, the, the CICD kind of build process and, and pipeline, um, which, which I found interesting. Um, I mean, obviously there's multiple methods and tactics and procedures they use, but, but that, that's certainly one that's interesting because to me, it, it kind of brings to the forefront this idea of, you know, bring security into that process. Everyone's trying to get builds into the cloud and release these things, but what happens to security, right? Is that, is that, will that be a potential lesson from this in, in the scope of all the lessons we're going to learn uh, from this attack? Yeah, I think that's one of the two valuable lessons. The On the supplier side, um, somehow build in the assurance that you need that that your development process isn't compromised in some way. And then on the consumer side, how do you build up assurance that the software provider isn't giving you a bad update? And the, the first one, you know, we, I think we have pretty good tools. Um, that's just security as usual, just do a better job of protecting credentials um, in your active directory and all the rest. The mm-hmm. other one, I'm not so sure. How can you validate software updates because you're not getting source code updates so you're only getting you know compiled updates um they're digitally signed with the correct signatures and that's what we use in the past was we just check the signatures see if they're okay see if the hash is all right uh for what you're downloading so now we have to come up with a way and i don't know what the answer is right now should it be a you know third party should you just rotate signatures so rapidly that an attacker has to continuously try and compromise them. I don't know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. It's well, appreciate your thoughts on that. It's uh, we're going to follow this oh, yeah. one and I'm sure we'll be talking about it more. Right, Scott, <laughs> yeah. on, on further episodes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that, that'd be good to have a, have a follow up on, uh, on this particular thing once they dig in and, and even learn more. So that'll be, that'll be great. Yes. Cause there's going to be hundreds more of, uh, victims, and then there's going to be, you know, some next step, right? Using stolen data or compromising the organizations and hurting them in some way. Yeah, and just the remediation of this is going to be fascinating to figure out how, you know, how to find out, you know, okay, we know we're attacked, but where, right? So, yeah, yeah. it's been great. Yeah. So, Richard, let's uh, let's switch switch gears a bit. Um, and uh, uh, now you've uh, you recently wrote an article for Forbes. Uh, that was entitled, There is No Cloud Security Segment. Now, okay, that's quite a claim, given that there's over 2,000 security vendors in your new directory that you, uh, that you wrote the, the, uh, the security yearbook. So what did you mean by, by, by that statement? Is there is no cloud security segment. That sounds, that, that doesn't, that, that doesn't uh, I can't co- quite grok that. Can you, uh, you elaborate? Yeah. You know, so the evolution was that, you know, I'd written a book on secure cloud transformation, how to do that well. And it was actually at the book launch for that, that I was inspired to write a history of the IT security industry, Security Yearbook 2020. And include in that, finally, the directory that I've been putting together for 10 years. So I've been collecting all this information um, because as a industry analyst, it just covers cybersecurity vendors. Um, I'm frustrated that I can't like find out all the companies that have gone out of business. Right? There's no list anywhere of all of those. Um, so I've started collecting all the data so that I can go back later and say, yeah, you know, in 2020, there were X number of vendors. And in 20, by 2021, X percent had gone out of business um, or been acquired or got new funding, you know, so there's tons and tons of data that I'm putting together. And the hardest part of that, it, after you've found the vendors through, you know, looking at every single uh, security conference and the vendors that, uh, you know, are presenting there, um, looking at other people's lists, compiling them, deduping them, 
uh, and I can outsource the data collection to my team in India to every quarter, for instance, they look on LinkedIn and tell me and record the number of employees at each of these companies. So I can see who's growing mm-hmm. and who's shrinking. Super valuable stuff. The one thing that's impossible to outsource for an industry analyst is the categorization. Because let's be frank, vendors say a lot of things about who and what they are that are just wrong. <laughs> um, they uh, Or they just don't say. you know. So I go to hundreds of pages where I have to dig down into the product spec sheets before I can figure out, oh, there's SIM. All that AI and ML stuff and threat hunting and all the rest. No, they're just a, a logging tool for... That's uh, Scott's alerts. fault, by the way. He's a marketing guy. Uh, Scott, yeah, let's not blame right. the marketing guys here. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I think we're going in the wrong direction. That's here. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just expressing my frustration because it takes me a long time to do that. And as a matter of fact, over the holidays, um, I went through 800 additional vendors and had to categorize them. So I just saw that over and over again. And I think my eyes are failing me now because I've looked at so many web oh, pages. Man. So, but last year, you know, as I collected it, I would see a vendor and they would say right on their front page would be big images of clouds. And they'd say, we're your complete cloud security solution. And I just put an entry in, you know, for a major category for cloud security. But last, uh, you know, before the book went to press last time, I had to go back and rationalize all my categories. And then I realized I'm looking at, you know, cloud security. Okay, what do they do in the cloud? So I need my next column, the subcategory. Oh, they do network security in the cloud. Okay, so they're a network security vendor. Boom, done with that. And then you go, oh, this guy does container security, you know, some Kubernetes mm-hmm. or, or something. Well, that's endpoint security. It's the same as server security, which I've always said is endpoint security. So I move them into the endpoint, and then I'll I'll find folks that do um, you know just cloud monitoring for governance, risk, and compliance. Mm-hmm. So that's GRC. Boom. By the time I was done, I could not find a single vendor that belonged in a category of cloud security. Not, and that's not saying that you need you don't. I'm not saying you don't need cloud security. There's plenty of security to be applied in the cloud, but it still fits the old model of you need data security, you know, encryption and all the rest. You need uh, network security. You need endpoint security. You need governance, risk, and compliance. Uh, all those categories still exist in the cloud. It's, you know, think of the cloud as just a, a big instance of a data center. You still need all that stuff uh-huh. in the cloud. Um and luckily, in many, many cases, it's easier to do. It's more complete, a lot easier to monitor. You know, so I'm still a you know fanatic when it comes to get to the cloud as fast and as soon as you can, uh, because you'll have all these advantages and have better capability at lower cost to stay secure. Yeah, it's interesting. So, I mean, so really, I think what you ended up doing is saying, look, there are kind of two distinct categories of these vendors, which you kind of just talked about, right? Vendors that have these solutions for deployments and um, monitoring, alerting, logging, blocking, all, all this stuff. And then of course, the, you know, I guess you could say the crowd strikes and the, you know, these guys, which offer a yep. cloud, you know, service in the cloud, security service in the cloud, right? Um, and, and so, you know, I guess the, the, it begs the question, Right. Um, you know, what would be a cloud security segment? I mean, I, you know, I think I think what we're seeing is, you know, the, there are vendors who offer solutions which have traditionally, frankly, been deployed in the on premise. Right. And then they say, oh, we've got that now in the cloud or you have security vendors who start off by saying we're a company that delivers our security service in the cloud from the start and only in the cloud. Um, and so you have that, and as you as you kind of shown, those categories are there. But like, what would it? What would a real cloud security segment look like if there was one, or should there be one, or will there be one? There, there could be one, and I've, I've thought of that. And the only answer I can come up with is a vendor that sells a security product to Amazon to secure AWS for Amazon. Right. 
or and then and then move over to doing it for Azure and Google and Rackspace and whoever else wants to offer a cloud service, but not you know something you layer in that just gets sold through to their customers. Something that actually protects Amazon from being hacked. So and that may be you know something that's that's a shim that fits between every virtual instance, right? So you can't do side channel attacks, uh-huh, something like uh-huh. that. Interesting. And I haven't run across a single one like that. So if if there are any, they don't ha- even have to advertise their or market what they do or anything. All they have to do is talk to the right people at Amazon and sell their product. Right. Right. Well, interesting. I mean, so, you know, I guess, um, you know, like I said, I mean, here at, at here at, you know, we're on a niche in radio. So we, we, we talk and we all, we'll always talk in this podcast series about, you know, a vision we have and the mission we have, which is, you know, actually automating security in the cloud. And, and in some respects, trying to do what you just outlined there, which is, you know, what if there was a pre kind of automated, pre-built, pre-engineered, complete security environment that you stand up in your AWS or Azure account, which provides this kind of, like I said, a pre-built security environment that consolidates multiple, multiple different solutions, whether it's endpoint encryption, network, web application, firewall, unified threat management, you know, all of those things um, in an automated way, um, you know, is, is something like that closer to, to, you know, what, what that, what a cloud security segment might actually, or should actually look like? Yeah, I think you could build that case. You know, if, if you break down what a nation does, right, they do security for cloud environments in every single ca- category, uh-huh. right? So they, they do it in network and endpoint and uh, data security and then provide the um, monitoring and support for compliance on top of that. So it is a general purpose. It's almost a meta solution Uh to do uh that. Uh, Similar, you know, I assume to what you get when you go to a, um, you know, a full fledged um, security consulting company, you know, Ernst and Young Uh or or, Uh uh, Deloitte, they come in, they, or Booz Allen is probably the best example. They come in and they just do it all for you. Now, mind you, takes, you know, it's a lot harder when it's not in the cloud. It takes them forever. You know, you're talking about several years to get all that done for you by a third party. You've essentially outsourced your security. Right. Um, so so I think uh, from my perspective, Anishin is leveraging the cloud and all the great things I was talking about, the cloud delivers it for you, making something new possible, which is you, if you have a cloud environment for delivering a a product or a service, you can add all the security quickly and easily and have it all in one place, managed in one place. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and interesting, right, Scott? I mean, I think, you know, it's something to watch and what is a cloud security segment? I mean, everything that, you know, and one of the reasons we want people to listen to this podcast is just to learn about, you know, what is, I mean, again, our world is now, fully in the cloud and, and given the, 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 the year we're, we're just almost completing now, which changed everything. Um, I, I think even Richard, it's safe to say those organizations who thought they were going to the cloud uh, this year really truly went to the cloud. Uh, and so I think that yeah. given that the cloud is everything, uh, when we think in terms of cloud security, it's, it's really about allowing you know, these enterprises, businesses, organizations to, to move to the cloud, but do it in a way that's easier for them. It's hard, right? Uh, and and I think following this cloud security segment will be interesting because I think the day that there is one, Richard, maybe that means um, it's easier to actually digitally transform and move to the cloud and, and do the things you want to do more powerfully there. Um, you know, I, I think that's perhaps something Scott will, will be watching yeah. uh, as, as we, uh, you know, kind of troll through this series of uh, security on cloud, right? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see the, <clears throat> the, the next thing that we need to make all this come together, which is 5G widely deployed. Uh-huh. Um, because 
then everybody's got a direct connection to all these cloud services, right? The, each individual with their handset or their 5G enabled laptop will just be part of it immediately, right? And that's when uh, you can start talking about bigger um, security models that layer on top of everything. Uh -huh. So it'll be, you know, I, maybe I don't need endpoint security for my device if I'm going through a filtering service, you know, offered by the telecom provider, for instance, um, where they just don't allow bad stuff to happen to my device from the network side. Exactly. Interesting. So, uh, uh, Richard, I had a I had another uh, question that this this may be a, a little off topic, but um, you know, in a, in a recent quote, I heard you saying, uh, and I'm going to quote this: "There's a massive amount of overlapping uh, overlap amongst cybersecurity vendors. There are far more companies trying to build something better instead of building something different." And I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that, um, on, on that quote, kind of what, what was your thinking kind of behind that? You know, is there, yeah. aren't they doing some, aren't they people doing something different? What? Yeah, I, I saw that quote too. And I guess uh, it struck me as, Hey, did I really say that? I must have because <laughs> it was on a podcast <laughs> because, but when I think about it, so my thinking is that, yes, there, you know, first of all, the, the reason for so many companies is, that quite often you can start a security company that does that solves the exact same problem as somebody else, um, but because you, the founders, the investors, are in a particular region, you know, say you're in the UK, you could find the twenty or fifty customers you need before they even know about the person in Singapore that's doing the same thing. So you get regional disparity all the time, and that doesn't tend to go away. There are very, very few instances of roll-ups of regional to create a global. Um, and as a case in point is uh, antivirus, right? So there are 150 antivirus vendors. When Symantec was on a roll and buying everything in sight, why didn't they buy antivirus vendors, right? That there was never any uh, consolidation in the industry. And that just never happened. Uh -huh. Or UTM vendors. <clears throat> There's over 50 UTM vendors, including a brand new one that I ran into at a conference in Asia back when people used to go to travel and stuff um, called Red Piranha. And they're in Perth, Australia. And they've got a killer little hardware appliance that they sell to people and people are still buying them. Even though, you know, the future says you will never, ever need another hardware appliance because everything's mm -hmm. in the cloud. So what do you need a gateway for anyways? Yet there they are. And there's new ones starting every single day. So that explains, you know, out of what is now and I'm announcing for the first time, 3,000 security vendors. Um, that explains why there's so many. And then there are. The you heard it first here. You heard it first on our podcast. Right. 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 3,000. <laughs> so the, um, but there are different approaches to everything, right? So for every problem, there's several solutions and startups, you know, grab onto one of them and try and take it to the market. The winner wins. Um, so if, you know, signature base antivirus was how we used to do things, I got where we had to look deeper into memory and look at processes and all that. And that gave rise to the, crowd strikes and silences and, and uh, sentinel ones of the world. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that appears to be better and people like that, or maybe it's just, it's a better add on to what you get for free from Microsoft anyways, nowadays. Um, and that's created, you know, CrowdStrike is now the highest valuation security vendor in the world. Last time I looked, it yep. was $48 billion, which is probably, could be the highest any security company's ever been valued. Correct. Ver yep. VeriSign used to be the highest valued, but they actually weren't security anymore when they got to that. And now you've got Sentinel One going to go IPO soon and be on their yeah, coattails, yeah. and we'll see what yeah. happens there. But yeah, yep, right. right. It's uh, we're seeing these huge jumping. And you know, I think the good news is, look, these these are companies built to do what they do in the cloud. Um, Right, which 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 is good, but but to your you know, right, well, I mean, actually, CrowdStrike and Sentinel One, I think more of 
um, they're still endpoint yep. solutions, yep. right? So they're worried about PCs, basically, and a few Linux boxes and all the rest, which is not a that's not cloud anything. That's still endpoint. Right. But they've incorporated better ways to get to those get to get to their instances, and they've done that in the cloud, and they give you a cloud interface, and it's multi-tenant, so you don't worry about mixing your data with your competitors. Um, but they've they they're just an example of companies that have leveraged the cloud and demonstrate how fantastic it is to take advantage of the cloud, which goes across the board for any company, right? Every company should be going to the cloud. But I have to one word of warning for all of us is cloud adoption is still thinly penetrated, despite how huge it is, um, despite, you know, all the, the valuations you can see and the revenue you can see at AWS for Amazon and, and Azure, you know, the two companies being two of the biggest in the world now, um, there are still many more companies that don't have, haven't moved to the cloud. Right. So, so in it, you know, as an analyst, I always am thinking oh, the this is the, the way of the world. It's a better way. So boom, we're already there. 10 years from now, we'll still be talking about people moving from their data centers and hosting data somewhere else. It's just, it's really true. And, it, and it's one of the reasons we find this topic so fascinating. And I think, again, if you look at 2020, um, you know, what, what's happened is we woke up one day and, and work was something we did and wasn't a place yep. we went. Uh, and, you know, everyone suddenly was, you know, working from home and, and everything changed. And I think, you know, uh, it certainly has there was always a trend of everyone moving to the cloud, as you've said, and, and digital transformation has been here for a while. But I think in, in 2020, we're seeing some companies actually uh, find that they have to move to the cloud uh, to adapt and to survive and pivot uh, in, in this new kind of COVID economy we have, right? And, and I think it, it uh, you know, like you said, this is still going to happen for a while. I think, I think Scott, we could have this webcast for the next 10 years and we'd still be having fantastic conversations about why people need to move to the cloud and, and why, uh, you know, relative to your last quote that Scott asked you about, you know, vendors need to, to build things different to allow companies to do that better, faster, easier, more secure. Right. Um, and that's probably why, uh, Richard, we could probably have you uh, as a guest for for many years and uh, never run out of things to talk about in, in this topic about cloud security, right? Yeah, so it looks like we're setting up another date uh, for at least uh, uh, next year uh, to right. have you on we'll, again. We'll bring whiskey next time. Absolutely, we'll do that. And, and I know, Richard, I think you're, as you've said, you're, you're in the process of writing your next book, which is the next edition that's... It's, it's, uh, uh, the 2021 edition, uh, I, I think that's correct. And, and that's coming. Um, and so we want to make sure people look for that. I'm assuming you're going to finish that. And like your 2020 book, it'll be available on Amazon. Is that right? Uh, actually, I'm debating moving it off of Amazon. You'll have to come to my website to get it. Got it. Um, so I have a little more control over the quality of the printing. Um but it's yeah, it's coming to, together fast. I had to wait until 2020 was over so to collect all the data, and thankfully, I usually launch at RSA conference in San Francisco. First, they moved it to May, and then they went completely virtual. So I don't have that uh, pressure to print enough books to ship to San Francisco in May. So the book will launch in May. Um, it it's basically got the updated directory in it. And then take the uh, fill out the history. There's always more stories to tell, and I'm interviewing uh, pioneers in the industry. This time, I've uh, interviewed uh, Amit Yaran uh, to get the story of the early MSSP days because he was at Riptech before he went on. Now he's CEO of Tenable, and and then the summary of what happened in 2020. The, you know, it's neatly bookended by COVID on the front end and solar winds on the back end. So, yes, uh, fantastic. Well, we can't wait, uh, Richard. It was just a treat to have you with us today with uh, all your thoughts and, and wisdom. Um, can't thank you enough for being our guest today and sharing all of your knowledge with us on the topic of cloud security. 
Anytime. Thanks again to our very special guest, Richard Steenan. And don't forget to get his latest book, Security Yearbook 2020, which is available on Amazon or directly on Richard's website at www.it-harvest.com slash shop. And uh, remember, the Security on Cloud podcast is brought to you by Anishin, the leading cloud security and compliance automation provider, delivering the fastest path to security and compliance in the cloud. Thanks, Scott. And thanks again to our guest, Richard Steenan. Until we meet again, I'm John Becky, And I'm Scott Emo. We'll see all of you next time on Anishin Radio. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Security on Cloud podcast. If you like the show, Be sure to subscribe so that you can join us again for another episode. And for tips, show notes, and more episodes, check us out at Anishan.com. See you next time.